Hi everyone and welcome back to Epic Mentorship. My name is Dr. Rashid and today we are going to look at 10 tips on how to better use the platform called Zoom for our next meetings, seminars and presentations. So without further ado, let's get started. All right guys, so before we start, the first thing we need to do is to make sure that the version of our Zoom that we're using is the updated version. So we can update our Zoom by simply coming to our profile, hitting the profile and then navigate to uh, check for updates. Okay. As you check for updates, the software is going to be up to date. So make sure the software is up to date so that all the available tools are going to be found. If your software is not updated, actually you are not going to get most of the tools. So to get the best out of it, make sure you are up to date. Okay. So click here to check for updates and then update accordingly. Once you are sure the software is up to date, the next thing is to start a new meeting. Okay, this is just a demonstrative meeting. So when you are into the meeting platform, the first tip that I want to share with you is called locking the room. Okay, you can actually lock the room, something like close the door when all the members attending the meeting are around. So once all your members are logged into the meeting, you can actually lock the room. So to do that, you just navigate down here to security and then you uh, enable lock meeting okay you are the admin so you can lock the meeting once you select this it means the meeting is locked no one can enter even if they have the link to actually uh to, they have the access the username and password they cannot enter this meeting because the meeting is locked something like the door is shut okay so the next tip is the use of the shortcut keys I know most of us are familiar with the shortcut keys, but I want to share with you the most important ones that I have found recently. For example, my favorite is the use of the space bar to unmute and mute yourself. You know, ordinarily before you, so you speak in the meeting when everyone is muted, if you want to speak, you have to come over here and unmute yourself, speak, and then mute yourself back. The most contemporary method now is the space bar key. So to, to speak, Using this the space bar, you just you just press and hold the space bar, and then you have the opportunity to speak temporarily. And then once you lift your hand, it's back to mute. So you are muted again. So there are a bunch of other shortcut keys that you can find in Zoom. So to get to those shortcut keys, you can either come to the video or audio icons and just navigate to the settings. Okay, once you come over here, you can uh, navigate to keyboard shortcuts. Now the most important part of this is that. There are a range of shortcuts that you can find here. They are available for you to use. But depending on your satisfaction, you can as well customize them. Okay. So instead of uh, this, you can customize to your liking. For example, you can start and stop a video by just uh, pressing S. Okay. You can customize it to that. And then when you, you can make it to enable global. What this means is even when you minimize the zoom, that effect takes over in your keyboard. Okay, once you press S, it's going to start or stop a video automatically, all right? You can change anything and at the end, you are free to restore to default, okay? You can always restore back to default if you are you are done or you are, you are okay or you are confused with the, with the shortcuts. You can always click here to restore back to default. Okay, so the next tip is to enable breakout room, okay? Uh, create breakout rooms. You know that you can have uh, multiple rooms now depending on the number of students that you have you can classify them according to a, a subgroups or they are about so to do that you can just come to your settings here and just click and then you can go to view more settings okay which will log you into your to your zoom account you can always log in using your username and password so you can always once you are here you can get straight down to where it says breakout room okay so you have to make sure that this icon is enabled so then you can as be able to assign breakout room so here allow host to assign participants to to breakout rooms when scheduling okay so you, you can tick this and then save okay so this will enable you to assign breakout rooms in the meeting all right so once this breakout room is enabled we can always return to our meetings and see that Yes, we have a breakout room here. Okay, so whenever during our meetings and we decide to share or separate our members into groups, we can easily do that. Okay, so once you click on it, you have the option to 
create a number of rooms you can create according to your liking you can create two three four five rooms okay you can assign the people automatically or you can assign them manually according to your liking okay or you can let participants choose according to their own liking maybe some people who want to be in group a group b group c so you can choose you can assign them manually or the software can assign them automatically all right so you can just create rooms and you can always uh, enter the room you can rename a particular room okay and then you can delete it as well you can assign that particular room or you can pick in people and move them from from one room to another according to your liking okay and you can add more rooms from here you can create uh, more rooms and then you can check a number of options here let's try to see they usually break out at, after 30 minutes but you can increase to maybe 15 minutes or one hour according to your your timing and then it will alert you before the, the the time is up and then you can uh, open all rooms at the time if you want you have the options to open all rooms so that is a very very important tip that i think sharing it can actually help us to do better in zoom platform so the next tip is to add a powerpoint as a virtual background while we're delivering a presentation so to do that you can just simply come to uh, share screen okay from the basic you just navigate to advance okay from this advanced option you can select powerpoint as a virtual background okay so once you double click you can navigate to wherever you have your powerpoint slides so that you can have them behind you as a one as your background so in my own case i have it in my desktop and you can just navigate to my presentation okay so once you open it you can see that the slides is actually behind me you can see they are very small Okay, I can even navigate, I can even push myself to different angle while I deliver my presentation. Okay, so it's very easy. You can come here and deliver the speeches and presentations slide by slide. Okay, you move from one slide to another. Okay, okay, you can reposition yourself to the top, or you can go back to uh to split the the video from, from my image. Okay, you can split from PowerPoint. So by clicking on split, and then you'll go back to the normal look at uh, the normal presentation, okay? But if you want to have yourself explaining the, the concept, you can always merge, merge yourself on the PowerPoint, okay? So you can have yourself back just like that, okay? It's a very important uh, tip that you can always use to during your presentations. All right, the next thing is, did you know that you can touch up your appearance to look much more professional and good looking yes you can do in the zoom meeting so that you can upgrade the lighting or to upgrade the looks in in yourself okay you look much better and professional so that that your girlfriend will not feel like you are kind of ugly so you can do that in not in, in zoom okay so let me show you how to touch up your, your appearance okay to look a little bit better than the way you look in the physical <laughs> so all you need to do is just to Hover over to video icon and go to settings. Okay, you can come over here and just touch up my appearance and click on touch up my appearance. When you click on touch up my appearance, you can see from the zero point to the highest appearance range. Okay, so you can see the, the variation that the lightning is increased. Okay, tip number six is you can actually adjust your low lights. Okay, how do you adjust the low light? You just click on this. So once you click, this is my look before but then you can adjust for low light okay when you have low lights behind you you can always adjust click to add the lighting you can see the difference it adds a little bit of the lighting and this does this is done automatic okay? this is done automatic if you want to make it manual you can as well so once you click on manual you can increase uh, the effect of the low light where so you can see the difference you know it's getting too much but i think the manual actually does a good job okay it looks kind of cool okay so we leave it at manual and then you can see and this the professionalism is actually uh looking perfect so you can do so much with this but for now work on this tool it can greatly help you during your next seminar presentations so the next tip is to use annotation icon do you know that you can use the annotation icon while you share your screen very easy let me give you an example you just simply 
navigate to share my screen. Okay, so for example, I want to share my this particular PowerPoint. I select it and I click on share. Okay, so while I share my screen, I have this annotated icon, which is quite very helpful. But as you click on it, you can see a range of uh, icons that you can play around with. You can make use of, for example, you can you can click on uh, the spotlight. You can always spotlight a particular uh, thing while you explain your your presentation, or you can use the stamp. You can showcase it at different points just to showcase some important points, just to show points of relevance and importance as you navigate uh, through your your presentations. And then you can have you can use the draw icon to draw whatever shape. For illustration purpose, you can draw anything that you want to share with the students or, or they have about. Okay, so you can draw, you can draw anything, and then you can add text to it. Okay, while you write, you can add text. You can use eraser to clean whatever you, you, you may not like, and you can use uh, you can format coloration. Okay, you can put in co different color, you can. You can undo certain things and then you can redo, you can clear, and then you can save uh, as the case may be. Once you click on here, you can save as a PDF or as a PNG file, depending on uh, whatever uh, format you want to save the file in. So you have this option to yourself. Okay, Very useful, very helpful. So the next tip is the use of immersive view. Immersive view is quite fantastic. But before you, you, you start uh, using it, you have to make sure that it is enabled in the main Zoom account. Okay, so to do that, you, you have to make sure that you come to settings and then you come to more settings. You navigate to your Zoom account, uh, to your Zoom account, and then you, you quickly go down to, okay, you can just come down here and make sure that this immersive view is selected, is enabled, okay? Make sure the immersive view is enabled. Once you have it enabled here, then you can go back to your meeting and you can always come to view. You click on view and then you try immersive view. So immersive view will kind of actually help you to have more interactive sessions with your team members while you have your own meeting. So the first uh, default setting is actually automatically assigned where you have all the team members assigned at this uh, in line like this. Okay, look at me at the first, uh, the first part. Okay, so in this kind of assessment, you can have up to five members. Okay, the next arrangement, you can have up to 25 members. Okay, and the next one, just like that, you can have up to six members arranged. The next one is you can have two people or they are about, okay, two people, and you can have, uh, the form of classroom, you sitting as a teacher and you can reposition yourself later on. I can show you how you can reposition yourself. Once you select a particular uh, setting, for example, this one, once you select and hit, and hit the start button, it's going to automatically change your view to that particular view. So just like now, you can see me in the classroom and I can be the teacher or I can be a student. So I can easily uh, drag and drop myself to a particular seat if I'm not comfortable with this seat, okay? So I can bring myself to this seat or if I want to sit close to someone, I can just come here and sit in this seat, okay? So you can play, change your seat accordingly, okay? Once you, you want to, you can change the view if you like, you can change it to another another view and just click into start there, okay? So you can see me in the lecture room in the lecture theater sitting here at the center you can uh, reposition yourself to another place if you want okay or you can bring yourself to the front okay so it's actually kind of a tool that is being introduced to promote uh interactions and make at least the virtual nature feel much more uh, look a bit physical while we deliver our meetings, programs, and events. Okay, so once you are done, you can go back and return to speaker view. Yeah, and stop the immersive view and return to speaker view. Okay, you can return to speaker view easily. Right, the next tip is sharing 
more than one file in the sharing section okay do you know that you can share more than one file while you're sharing your screen to do that you just come to the share screen icon here and then you can select the number of files that you want to share on the screen okay so you select the first one and then you hold the control key and select as many as you wish but for this one i would like to share just two so once you you are done selecting you can just click on share okay and then you can have them actually shared so the next tip is the use of video filters and studio effect so that you can look a little bit better for that you draw from so you can do some touch up to look handsome and to look a bit better and more presentable during your seminars and presentations so to do that you quickly come to the videos icon here and navigate to the video settings and then you can come to uh, background and filters okay so you can always come to video filters okay in video filters you have series of options you can put this mosaic anywhere you can see the the google you can look fantastic and it really sound looks good on me okay okay you can put any type you can even assume you graduate you have your degree and then you can change your glasses and put these programs okay. so we are yeah, one of my favorites i like this and then you can go to the studio effects you have lots of options to choose for example you can add your eyebrows okay let me remove the glasses so that you can see the effect without eyebrows and with eyebrows okay and you can increase the you can change the coloration and increase the opacity of of this particular uh, effect okay you can increase it or decrease it and then you can have mustache you can play around with the mustache either none or you can select a particular one and then you can uh, put it on yourself okay automatically it will update and then you can play with the opacity as well and the color and then you can set this to apply to all your future meetings so you don't have to reset again after every meeting so to be uh, part of the default settings at every meeting, so you have the same goggles, you have the same touch up, so you look fantastic. All right. So, the next tip is adding virtual background. Now, to add virtual background, we just can return to the meeting and then we can navigate to our video icon. We select choose virtual background and then we can navigate to background and filters. And over here, we have a range of backgrounds that we can select to add to our meetings okay we can select this one or this or any of them and we have the option to add a particular background that is uh, that we are comfortable with okay we can download different backgrounds uh, big images or customized backgrounds from canva or microsoft powerpoint and and the likes so we can easily import into our our software or platform so we can just hit this to add an image or video as the case may be, okay? So for example, we can just import this and it will be our background, okay? So the major problem we usually face here is during the meetings, when you look, you can see this one key uh, look in the image. It doesn't actually in the background, it doesn't actually sound, looks professional. So to avoid this, we have to add a green screen if you can add a green screen then it's going to make it look much more professional okay if you want to make the video to look much more professional and avoid this wonky look which i know most of us have seen in meetings and the likes which is kind of irritating you can just come over here because i'm using a green screen behind me so when you have a green screen it will actually help you to make it look much more professional and uh, compact okay so to do that you just uh, come over here and say none and you can tell the the software that i have a green screen behind me i have a green screen behind me i need to take it off okay so once you say i have a green screen and then you 
you choose a particular background, for example, I put this background. So we can see that the wonky loop is no more, right? Right, so it has gone there. Yeah. So it's a very, very important tip. So try to, to put. So if you want to look much more professional, if you want to look much more professional, you have to try to put in a green screen behind you. Very, very important. If you have a green screen, then it looks much more uh, professional. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. And I hope you have learned something today. If you do, please feel free to share with your friends. And don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. See you in my next video. Bye.